Today, let's talk about uh, permission sets, permission set groups, if you haven't heard of those yet, um, and why Salesforce is making this big push to move uh, your best practices from using profiles as your baseline for permissions over to permission sets, and how to properly deploy all of these things, how to make sense of this all. So back in the past, we used to always use profiles as the baseline, and then permission sets were kind of these special cases, right? When you needed it to just that extra permission for somebody um, because they're performing a special job. And now we're really moving into a model where the profiles have less and less control and the permission sets should really be where we define everyone's permissions. There are some challenges with this though. Um, one being that, number one, when we're creating new fields in Salesforce, I'm sure we're all used to next, 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 next. We define the field type, we pick the name, and then we hit next a few times and then we're done creating that field. Well, one of those screens that we always Always hit with that next button is the field level security screen that list of profiles of who gets read and edit access to this new field that we're creating well the problem with that is is that by default just about every single one of those items is checked and if we are moving more to a permission set based model that's not really helpful in helping us set up a good least privileged access style of permissions. So with least privileged access, we want to always be thinking about who gets this thing and not give anybody else that thing and not give anybody th things that they don't need. Um, so that's one of the challenges for sure in moving towards this model. The other challenge is if you're doing much larger deployments, you're working with a development team and you're creating a lot of schema you're creating a lot of things that require permissions and we're very purposely not deploying these things with our profiles. That means we need to start either creating new permission sets all the time or have some kind of a baseline of permission sets that we're using. Now it does feel a little bit redundant to create a permission set per profile. You may as well just use the profile. So let's separate out a little bit of what makes permission sets different from profiles files, different ways you can attack them, and how to use permission set groups to help you stay really organized in this process. Well, number one, there are some things that just aren't going away with profiles, at least not today. Profiles are still going to define that page layout that you see when you enter a page. Remember, a page layout is a cross section of the record type of the object and your profile. So that is what determines what you see when, you, when it pops up on screen. If you've ever looked into the page layouts of any object, you'll see that button in setup that says page layout assignments. And you'll see that grid of record types and profiles. And based on the combination of record type and profile, you get a particular page layout. Now, most of the time those page layouts are the same, or they change per record type or for very specific profiles. Perhaps the finance person doesn't need to see the same stuff as the same salesperson, uh, perhaps the vendor account record type doesn't need to look the same as the customer account record type. Those things make sense. Um, so the profile is still going to play an important role in that and some other defaults like your custom, your default apps and tab selections. Uh, so there are things that the profile still has to be used for to get the system right. So when you're thinking about setting up your profiles, remember that this person based on their profile is going to fall into some level of experience that you're planning out for them. So now profiles, we're almost thinking a little bit more about experiences than security and permissions. Whereas now permission sets can take over uh, that burden of just permissions, profiles we can start thinking a little bit more in terms of experience. Although it's a slippery slope and it is easy to still use profiles for permissions because they are essentially a giant permission set. A profile is just a permission set that you are permanently assigned to with some of these extensions on experience. So there's a few ways that you could start dicing up your permission sets. Number one, you have to make sure you have a really good DevOps process. You have to make sure that when you're developing in a sandbox or a scratch org that you are not defining
lining your field with profile field level security. That will kill your whole approach. You have to make sure, you have to have a permission set plan. The way I like to do it, uh, especially in larger projects with lots of well-defined feature sets that you're building, is to actually have permission sets based on the feature name. So now you're basically creating a, a permission set, naming it based on the feature that it supports, giving just the permissions required to support that permission, and bundling it up that way. It's hard to define, decide rather, where to draw the line on permission sets. Do I have a permission set for every single permission with the name? I think that's a little too granular. Or do I put like permissions together for different types of objects or maybe different functional areas? That's a possibility. Like I said, I like to break it down by feature. So if somebody needs to access a feature, we might call it manage my feature, edit my feature, read only my feature. So I might have three different different permission sets to support that feature, and I almost think of them as feature toggles. So when an administrator is in the back end and deciding who needs access to this feature, they're always, they're just using their permission sets essentially as a feature toggle, flipping on and off the right sets of the right features for the right people, giving them just the access they need to use those features. That may not work for everybody, so I'd be interested to hear actually what you guys think and how you approach this. Now, there are other things that need to be thought of here. There might not, it might not be that easy to divide. So in other cases, we've had what we call base permission sets. We almost think of this as the replacement for the profile in terms of permissions. So while if we think, well, let's throw away the profile for everything except for some user experience issues, and we need to get at least a baseline for, let's say, a sales user or a manager, where we know there's a baseline of, let's say, object access that they require, I might make something called sales manager base as a permission set. And that's a baseline so that we think of all the other permission sets for the features as being additive to that baseline. So that might have you know, all your create, read, update, delete, your view all, your modify all for all the objects that they're ever going to need to fulfill that role, but not more. That's when the other permission sets come in. Now they're also with managed packages and the permission sets that they introduce um, we start getting into this mess of, well, a sales manager needs our sales permission base, but they also need these two permission sets from this managed package, those five permission sets from that managed package. They need some permission set licenses, um, which is slightly different. And we want to make sure that it's really easy to onboard these users. But now we have this big mess. Every user needs a whole series of assignments. This is where permission set groups come in handy. Permission Permission set groups basically allow us to take permission sets and bundle them together into a group. That way we can just assign the user the permission set group, which grants them all the permissions to all the permission sets within that group. Now behind the scenes, it doesn't quite work that way, but I might discuss that in a different deep dive developer topic where we get into the schema of permission sets behind the screen, how groups are created and managed, and that's the secret sauce to how Salesforce actually manages and enforces those groups. Another thing that Salesforce has added with groups is what's called the muting permission set. Muting permission sets allow us a finer level of control over groups that we've actually never seen in Salesforce before. Typically, our permissions model in Salesforce has always been thought of as additive. You have your profiles and your permissions. There's no such thing, there used to be no such thing, as a permission that restricts permissions, right? You just remove a permission or you add a permission. There's no uh, negative permission. You can't say this person specifically can't do this. You can only say that they can or just not give them the permission. But in permission set groups, because we have this, this mess, I would say, of all these different permission sets with lots of overlap and lots of areas of concern, and these permission sets also, don't forget, they still live outside the group. They can still be assigned individually and they can belong to other permission set groups. So the permission set isn't confined to a group when it's added to it. It's just a member of that group. It can be a member of other groups and it can also still be assigned individually. 
equally. So if we have a permission set that where one of the, per, or a permission set group rather, where one of the permission sets does something really sensitive, or we want to ensure that none of them in the group are doing anything overly sensitive that we don't want as a baseline for the group. One example might be to view encrypted data. So there's a permission, a system permission, called view encrypted data. You can find this in your permission set, open up any permissions that you'll find this permission. Now, let's say we wanted to create a permission set group for all our sales team, and one of these permission sets in the group has all kinds of great things that we need, but it may also have this view encrypted data. Well, we want to create a muting permission set that basically says what this group cannot grant by any means. So we would create a permission set for view encrypted data, and we would basically would be adding it to the group as a muting permission set, basically a negative permission saying, regardless of what anything in this group has to say, this is not allowed ever. So we're basically canceling out certain things that nothing in the group has. Now, it is possible that nothing in the group actually granted it, but because groups are dynamic and the permission sets in the group evolve and the group itself may evolve, we want to maybe make sure that that permission is never granted as a result of being a member of the group. Now, maybe you still want that permission in that specific set because when you assign it on its own or maybe as part of another group, it is actually needed and okay to have. But maybe in our this particular group, our onboarding group, uh, we never want to make sure that that's part of our baseline. So we can add these muting sets in there to make sure we're not being overly permissive and too sloppy with our dynamic group that we may have some struggles controlling uh, in the future as, as they grow and change over time. So that's one of the things that you can do with these permission set groups, um, which is a totally new concept to Salesforce, is a, a, a negative permission, if you will. Um, one thing to note about the muting set is that just because it's muted in that group does not mean that every user of that group cannot have that permission. It just means it won't be granted to them by them being a member of that permission set group. They can still get that permission from other means, either by getting a permission set that has it that's not part of the group, or a permission set that has it that's in the group but directly assigned, not assigned through the permission set group. That would allow them to still have that permission. So just because a group says no viewing encrypted data doesn't mean that every member of that group can't view encrypted data. It just means they can't view it due to their membership of that group. Um, so anyways, I'd like to figure out how other people are slicing and dicing permission sets. Uh, it's an interesting topic. Sometimes it's a challenge depending on your org, your use cases, and your users and their personas within that org. Um, I'd love to hear more about how you guys are solving this problem and migrating over to the permission set model, how you're interacting with it in your DevOps process, and making it easy for your administrators. Hit me up in the comments or my email at leadsource.com.